Hey everybody, this is Jaeger Bowman. I'm back with another... Ah, just kidding. This is Starhawk. This is co-op mission. So Trotsky and I, after playing that last game that you guys got to see, we decided that we would try hopping into the co-op mode. And let me just say this right now. Starhawk co-op is freaking awesome. It's hectic as shit, but it's awesome. And we didn't know what we were doing. Still awesome, though. So here's the objective to this game. It is a tower defense sort of game. Um, you'll notice at the top of the middle of the screen, there is a one with a green bar. So we are on round one of the tower defense sort of scenario. And the green bar is our rift energy. As I get a five piece! Yeah, you just saw a five piece! So we are trying to d defend our rig. Our, our rig is the one that gives us the rift energy. And we were just trying to protect it from, I think, the Outlanders are what they're called. So each round, some different type of enemy comes at you. In this one, these guys are, like, they have, like, blades on their hands, and they can come at us, and they try chopping us to bits and everything. Um, but, so we're just trying to keep our distance. There are some people uh, in the distance, like, sniping and everything, but the majority of them are ground units. What's awesome about Starhawk, and what I'm growing to love, is this build and battle system. So I guess this is going to also be kind of a review of Starhawk, since I have one day played as a quad, another one. Man, this is awesome. So this is going to be like a review as well. Not only are you are going to see gameplay in the background, but um, I've been playing pretty much non-stop today. Uh, I've been playing, I probably have like six hours played right now, and... I, uh, it's unbelievable the way it looks, the way it plays, everything about it. I heard some reviews that said like the uh, the video quality isn't that good. Let me just say, I think it's I think it's really good. Uh, it has something different about it. It it's not like insane HD, but it, it's the HD that you come to expect when you're in like a midwestern outback sort of you know like third person shooter. It, it was awesome to me. Look at the graphics there, like, um, so, a little bit about the, uh, actual gameplay that's going on for a little bit before I get into a full-blown review on the game. Um, while we're defending that tower, we noticed after the first round, um, that our, our rig was damaged severely. So, in the build and battle system, we actually built a robot arm that helps repair it. So... Um, while we're fighting and we're trying to keep people off of this, um, our robot is repairing our stuff. And you can put that ro robot into a spot where it can actually get multiple uh, buildings at the same time. So that's really cool. Okay. Let me also say about the co-op mode actually lets you level up for your multiplayer experience. So Trotsky and I are here um, as a team. And the skill points, or not the skill points, the XP that you get while you play this game um, gives you experience points for the multiplayer as well. Even all the like the unlocks and stuff, the little trophies and things that you get, everything is completely compatible um, with with the multiplayer. I don't know as of yet whether there's a benefit to leveling up, like. Of course, it makes you look cool and everything, but like in other games, um, other shooter games, there's always the system where as you level up and progress, you get better and bigger and better things. As far as I can see right now, there isn't that aspect in it. What you get is that you get to customize your character, the way he looks, everything about him. Like you can put emblems on your items and stuff. But that all comes by the, the levels and the amount of experience that you get in the game. Um, the actual in-game stuff in the multiplayer, you start off with a primary rifle, the one that you see in my hand right now. And if someone builds a barracks or a supply depot like I was just left from, you can pick up a shotgun and you can also pick up a rocket launcher. Um, and there's also ammo in here that keeps resupplying. So you can always go back and get more ammo as you need it and see fit. Um, what you see in that tower where Trotsky initially built and you saw me sniping from, that's, uh, you can build sniper towers. So these sniper towers will allow you to pick up an additional weapon. So you can pick up the sniper rifle um, 
and it also has the ammo for the sniper rifle up there as well. So here I'm trying to implement the building build and battle system. I couldn't really kill this guy, so I thought maybe I can throw a building and hopefully crush it on to him. That wall placement is absolutely horrible. It doesn't kill anybody, but it actually helps me out later on in the round. Yeah, so back to the actual multiplayer and also this, I guess. But you you can pick up mul you can pick up other weapons. So around each of the maps there's like hot point locations where you can pick up for instance like a repair what a repair gun that allows you to repair like either your building structures or allows you to repair um, your vehicles that you're using. The real cool thing is that with that weapon or with that repair gun you can take down the enemy walls and turrets and stuff like that extremely quickly. It's better, it's more efficient than actually shooting a rocket at it, but being up close you have to be like really close to it, so it becomes difficult. Some other things that you can pick up, you can pick up a pistol. Um, the pistol is actually one of, it's not like most pistols in shooter games where it's the weakest weapon. It's actually a really high damage weapon. I think it's a two shot kill. Um, for a two shot body shot kill. So that's really nice as well. The downside is you have to have pretty good precision and you don't get to spam the trigger like the other things, other weapons, but it pays off if you can become accurate with it. Um, so some other cool things about the multiplayer. I, I really enjoy how hectic the games can get. So in the video that I showed when my first game, me and Trotsky were just playing Team Deathmatch. And that was fine. Like, that was very... Like, there wasn't that many people in the lobby. Um, we inadvertently started our own match. And our own server. And it... We didn't know anything about how to set the settings and whatnot. So it actually started with 2 versus 2. If you stay in lobbies that, like, you're building off of a previous game... Eventually, the matchups can become 16 versus 16. And when you get 16 people versus 16 people on any game, it becomes crazy the type of stuff that you can do. Um, the, the gameplay becomes fast-paced. Not as fast as what this co-op's showing, because the co-op is just absolutely ridiculous. Like, we jumped into this after a few games, I think to our second game, and we, we were like, oh shit. What did we just get ourselves into? Sorry for that yawn. We're like, oh shit, what did we get ourselves into? Because this just turned blew my mind with all the shit that was going on. Also, oh, let's transition into the, the server settings and the way you can set up games. So this is completely new to me, and I appreciate everything that they brought to the table here. Triple kill! So, you can actually set up any game style, any setup that you want, um, and, and have it as a public match for people to level up on. So earlier today, or well not earlier, I guess it's like 2 o'clock in the morning, um, I decided that I wanted to learn how to use the Hawk. So the Hawk is a flying rig that can turn you into either a like a jet, essentially, with different various missiles that you can shoot, or it can turn you into a ground unit, which you look like a transformer, essentially. But I absolutely suck at flying vehicles. In Battlefield 3, I was horrible at it. Um, and this game's no exception. So what I did, I went into the create a game, like the server making lobby. And I created a game type of just free-for-all. It was essentially free-for-all, but all we were doing was dogfighting. So the only uh, vehicles in the game were the jets or the hawks and we were just flying around you know shooting people um, trying to trying to kill them. I did this so I could practice my flight skills and I let's just say I didn't get really much any better but I had the full customization of everything that I wanted to do in the lobby I could set that up the way I wanted to yo check this out you can actually with the rocket launcher you can target like a homing missile on anything that's in the air all you have to do is hold in L1 or L2. No, L1 and R1 at the same time. So L1 aims and then R1 usually shoots, but if they're in the air, you can hold it. So let's get back to the main issue here. Um, 
the customizable server, so I was in my own dogfighting server, and I set it to a ridiculous score and a ridiculous time limit. So I set it up for 30 minutes, 100 kills, which is very difficult to do in uh, a dogfighting scenario. And I just flew around the whole game. I got the opportunity to learn as much as I could on how to do that. I was really impressed with that. Essentially what this allows is that you can you can set up a server or a game mode or game type to fit your liking. You don't have to go into just a regular old public game and uh, take what the server gives you. If you don't want to play against ground vehicles, if you don't want to play against flying vehicles, you can actually establish that into the server settings and, and, and limit what what you you do and do not face against so if you wanted to do like a free-for-all with just infantry units like no vehicles whatsoever I believe you can have that option to do that and I to me that's an awesome awesome private match lobby and I know um, the guys over at Starhawk they they created this game to make it as competitive as possible so last night or two nights ago, depending on when I actually upload this, they had a live stream of some MLG players. MLG is Major League Gaming. They're professional video game players that usually play like first person shooters and whatnot or third person shooters. Well, they had a live stream up there with uh, Hastro and uh, what was his name? T something. And they essentially said to them, that this game is set up for a competitive MLG game battles type scenario. So that having those private matches, those servers that you can set up, and also password protect and make it only for clan battles, um, they did that with that full mindset. I love that. I, I actually was a competitive gamer in Black Ops and partly in Modern Warfare 3, and anything that they can do to help support that scene is awesome. Wow, this is a long video. Which brings me to the next point. Most of these games that you play in, they last about 20 minutes long. You can set up any scenario that you want in that private server. Like, I could put up a team deathmatch that only goes to 50 kills and make it only 10 minutes long. That's possible. But most of the game types, it seems like, like Zone and Cap the Flag, most of those games last like 20 to 30 minutes. So it it's very difficult, like right now, for me to commentate, for me to talk about random shit or talk about pointed information for 20 minutes, but I'm going to keep going. This is my first try at this, so we'll see how it goes. But yeah, those games are like 20 to 30 minutes long sometimes, and there is a progression of how much action and how much pace they take. So for like the first minute to three minutes of the game, not much is actually happening. So you're building your rift, you're getting rift energy from your uh, rig, and that rift energy allows you to build buildings and such. Um, but there's a requirement to how much, like how much energy each builder takes, and you only start off with three rift energies. And like the barracks, I think is is four. Some of the tank structures are um, upwards of like six. And then you can also build like these, these uh, shields that go around your entire base, and those are, um, I think they're eight or ten rift energies, and I, you can only hold ten to twelve at a time. Oh, I want you to take notice what's actually happening on the screen. So these guys are pretty far in the distance, and I was telling Trotsky, I was like, Trotsky, if you burst fire these, which I know that's a common thing. But it's actually, you need to do a slow burst fire. So in the previous, in the beginning of the video, I was like burst firing really quickly. And I wasn't getting that many hit markers. I wasn't getting that many shots on target. Because they have reticle bloom. So reticle bloom, if you don't know, is like, essentially the more you shoot, the wider your hip spray becomes. Or the wider the, the errant shots become. Um, and I was telling Trotsky, if you shoot slowly, like in three to four round shots at a time, that reticle bloom doesn't actually go up that high, and you get more shots on target. So, um, that was pretty cool. I really like that aspect. That gives you the more of the skill aspect. It's not just uh, spray and pray. It's uh, You actually need to think about everything you do in this game. Um, and 
yeah, I just appreciate that aspect of it. These little fucking, well not little, these huge fucking blue guys took so many rockets to kill. And then when you got them near death, they charge you. I was like, oh crap. So we tried unloading and unloading on these guys. <clears throat> so what else can we talk about in the game? Uh, what, I guess, what's my favorite weapon? We'll, we'll start with that since we got some time. Um, I actually enjoy using the shotgun. So there's a shotgun that you get in the supply bunker. Uh, it's a two hit kill when you're up close and it absolutely rapes face. So one of my new strategies that I'm trying to employ is that um, I will, in the beginning of the game, someone usually builds a supply bunker, that's like a common thing, and then I'll, I'll build the, uh, I don't even know what the vehicle's called, but it's like a little jet ski, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll get my shotgun and then get my jet ski, and most of the time the enemy team is just in their base like waiting for rift energy, and they're not really expecting like an early rush. So, as you know, you guys know how I play. I like to go after it all the time, never really stop moving. So what I would do, I, I got that jet ski, my shotgun, I would drive to their base while they're all like waiting around to build buildings and just unload on them. It's so satisfying and so much fun to do that. So I guess that's, that's my favorite weapon. Uh, I also enjoy sniping. Even though I am no good at sniping in any shooter, any first person or third person shooter, uh, it's just something about it when you get that headshot, that one shot kill, it, there's so much, f it's, uh, it's enjoyable. It's like rewarding that you uh, actually did that. So I noticed, look at, I want to point your attention to the screen here, I think it's coming up shortly. So we're in between rounds, they give you a little bit of time. Uh, I'm shooting these barrels because we are really low on rift energy and we're trying to just like fortify our base because these guys are getting stronger and stronger and stronger. But on the screen in between the rounds it tells you which direction people are coming from. So I built this wall assuming that they would try getting through. And look at this guy. He gets stuck in the crack. So I'm like yelling at Trotsky, Trotsky, come over here and look at this. And he's like, man, that's really funny. And I shot him one time. Yeah. I shot him and I must have unlodged him and uh, he ran me right over. That's another thing I love about this game so far is vehicle kills. So in Battlefield 3 I was always the guy that ran around oh and this is in this part in the game is where we just get owned. So these guys have like these glider rigs that they can, or you can see them right there but they also have that uh, the it's like a buzzsaw so they can come and like shoot flames and sparks at us and from this point on I think Trotsky and I are like spawning into death almost instantly it becomes very difficult in this section but back to the story so we uh in in Battlefield 3 I was always the guy that would drive around in like the ATVs and just try running people over and actually when they came out with um they came out with the new maps the yeah they gave a forklift the one time and I was for the longest time just tried getting a kill with a forklift and so I enjoy vehicle kills I think it's so humiliating and hilarious at the same time look at these guys they're just like all over me but yeah so back to the co-op here um, the co-op mission I don't know what map this is it's something like Field 17 or Rig 17. Um, there, I believe there are like three or f no, there may be four or five different maps that you can play in the ri in the uh, in the co-op. I guess it can also go up to four players multiplayer. Um, so it's not just a two-person co-op. You can add up to four people online and play, or you can actually do two split screeners and do that as well. So I'm excited to see like. In the future, maybe people will start getting this game on my friends list and then getting some, like, a whole bunch of people in here. I did notice that um, the multiplayer aspect of it, it is very, you need to be organized as a team. So I actually got into a capture the flag match, and the people that I were playing with, they were like a party of six or seven of the 16 people, and they were talking strategies. 
and me, I don't know anything about this game really that much yet. But listening to them chat and talk was actually very educational for me. And you see, we're at rig critical, so these guys are pretty much annihilating us right now. And uh, they're about ready to destroy our rig. We're just trying to grasp at straws at the moment. And it doesn't actually pay off, but we try our best. So if, if you can get a team organized in here, uh, it helps with build structures, like the build ordering and everything, like what buildings you're going to be putting up. Uh, it also helps, uh, you know, it's just a lot more fun to game with people. I had a lot, I had a lot of fun game with Trotsky here. Even though we, we weren't that good, it was just a new experience, a fun experience. We could chat it up while we are getting all this crazy stuff. And I guess that leads me to the type of videos that I'm going to be putting on my channel in regards to Starhawk. So, this 21 minute commentary is really taking a toll on my voice. <clears throat> I'm starting to get hoarse and everything. So in the future, I think I'm going to be doing like live team communication. That will give a lot of reactions and everything. So I'm going to wrap this up here. This has been Jaegerbomb. Hope you guys enjoyed this co-op. I know I had fun playing with it. And I'll see you later. Peace.